Let's move on to the JSON value annotation. This is used to identify a method that returns the instance's JSON representation. The JSON value annotation marks a getter method that returns the serialization of the object. This means that the signature of the method must be non void and argument free. Normally this will be a scalar, but it can also be any serializable type such as a map. The presence of this annotation signals to Jackson that it should not serialize the object itself, but call the annotated method instead. Only one method can be annotated in this way. If more than one method is encountered, an exception will be thrown. It is important to note that you cannot return a full JSON string. You have to return a serializable object such as a map. If you want a method to generate the JSON string, you should use something like JSON raw value instead. And finally, the reverse of JSON value is JSON create, which will populate an instance based on a JSON string. We'll be covering this in a later video. We're going to see two examples. The first example will demonstrate using the annotation on an enum value, and in the second example, we will annotate a method that returns a map that represents the key value pairs we want the JSON string to consist of. Okay, so let's switch to the code view and see this in action. In the first example, we're going to serialize the level enum, which is nested in the course class. In the level enum, you can see that there is a getter method, getName, which returns a string value. This is the method we're going to annotate JSON value. Now let's have a look at the unit test. Here, we are selecting the advanced enum value to serialize and should expect the output to be the string advanced. Let's execute the test and check to see if this is true. And yes, you can see that the output is just the string advanced. Let's have a look at a slightly more involved example. In the second example, we're going to serialize the author class. In this class, we have a method called toJSON. This method constructs a map of the properties and values we want to appear in the JSON representation of this class. And because we're in control of how this method constructs that representation, we can do some very useful things. As an example of this, I have concatenated the first name and last name fields to form a full name field. Now let's have a look at the unit test. As you can see, we're setting the first and last name of the author class, and when the class is serialized, it will ignore all other methods and fields, and just call the toJSON method. Okay, let's see this working and run the tests. And as we expected, the test passes, and you can see the JSON it produces in the console window at the bottom of the screen. And here is a prettified version of the JSON output. You can clearly see that the full name property and its value is the concatenation of the author's first name and last name. As mentioned before, the reverse operation of JSON value is JSON create. We will be looking into this annotation in a later video. Now let's widen our knowledge of Jackson and take a look at another annotation.